didn't even speak to his brother. He spoke to the Ansar. And he said, make sure you tie him tight. Don't let him get away. His mother got a lot of money. And you can get a nice good price for him. Abu Aziz was like, wait, whoa, you my brother. How you going to talk to them about me like that? Musab ibn Umair, he said, you're not my brother. The ones who are tying you up, they are my brothers. That's his brother, brother, same mother, same father. He said that too. I want you to think about that in context of the verse that we mentioned in the beginning. Only the believers are brothers. Allah could have simply have said, in that al mu'minun Only the, or, or verily the believers are brothers. But no, Allah used what is called adat al-hasri. It's a particle that restricts something to something else. So Allah in this verse restricted brotherhood to iman, belief. So that's why it's verily, only the believers are brothers. The amazing thing about this is that the Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were always on point. You want to know why? Because that verse wasn't even revealed yet when Musa ibn Umayr said that. In the Ma'mu'minun and Iqwa, only the believers are brothers. What is Surah to Hujurat? Chapter number 49. Surah Hujurat wasn't revealed until way after the battle of Badr. But they already understood based upon their tarbiyah, their training and their upbringing from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that this belief that we have, it creates a brotherhood. And the brotherhood that it creates is more, is more of a brotherhood even than blood brotherhood. Especially when you fight against the truth and you're ready to stand on a battlefield and put your life at risk against the truth. In the Malmuk Minun and Iqwa, for Ashlihu Bayna Akuwaykum, wa ta'amullah la'alakum turhamun. وقولك ولينا ذو صفر الله عليه وراكم وصار المسلمين فصفروا إن أبوه الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل صلاة وتم تسنين على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ورضي الله تعالى عن سادة التابعين وعلماء العاملين وأئمة الأربعة المجتهدين ومقالدهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد يا إخوان I advise you and I advise myself to fear Allah to have taqwa of Allah and we're talking about the foundations of brotherhood. You know, we live in a society that likes to address symptoms and outward causes rather than to address the things that cause those outward causes. What do I mean? If you get sick, you have a cold or a fever, most times you go to get some treatment, you just dealing with the symptoms. You want something to bring the fever down. You want something to suppress your cough. You want something to stop your runny nose. You want something to stop your congestion. But very, most of the time, when our attention is not directed, what caused us to become sick in the first place? What caused us to have the runny nose or the cough or the fever or whatever? Islam, it's not like that. Islam deals with the cause or the causes. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah for Islam. You see in the verse that we mentioned from Surah Al-Hujurat that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala connected brotherhood with faith. The 
Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did the same thing. It has been narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, La taqtulu jannata hatta tu'minu. That you cannot enter paradise or you will not enter paradise until you believe. That taqtulu jannata hatta tu'minu. وَلَا تُؤْمِنُوا حَتَّى تَأَبُّوا And that you cannot believe until you love one another. Again, an attachment, a connection between belief and brotherhood. There's a connection between belief and brotherhood. And when you find a deficiency in belief, you also find a deficiency in brotherhood. Talking about Islamic brotherhood, any other type of brotherhood, anything can come and break it. Because the principles are not the same. Y'all could have grown up and been through World War III together, come up out of the sandbox together. But one of you brothers may have a price. You might be ready to sell your brother out if the woman looked good enough. You might be ready to sell your brother out if the bag is big enough, if enough bread is put on the table. If your belief is weak, you might be able to be scared into giving up your brothers. Yeah, even amongst Muslims, the belief is weak. Some of you will sell out. Some of us, we're so weak that if we get a parking ticket and the police shows up on the scene or for a moving violation, a citation, a fine, some of us are so scared. Hey, whoa, what was that? What no problem? Listen, man. You know I'm Muslim, right? You know they're terrorists, right? I can get you some good news. That's some of us. Some of y'all think this is funny. No, there's people sitting in jail right now for stuff like this. He ain't did nothing but go to the master and pray, and somebody's scared to get their green card revoked. Somebody's scared because, you know, they, they, they did some criminal activity, and, you know, the maximum sentence is only three or four years, but, you know, they got them in a room sweating them out. Hey, ain't you Muslim? Go to the master and bring us something good. And they come to the master and lie. And take some innocent brother, some innocent sister away from his family just so they can't go to jail for some crime that they did. That brother's iman is weak. Because if the brother's iman was strong, he would know that a law exists. Right? There are principles to this belief that we have. This belief is not just what you think it is. There are certain things about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is wide, it's obligatory for us to believe. We have to believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is before time. Before anything existed, there was Allah. We have to believe that when all of this is over, when everything is destroyed, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Quli shay'an fan, everything is moving towards its, its expiration date. Everything dies, everything finished, everything ceases to be ceases to exist. There will always be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's battling, he's going on after time. You have to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is muqalifu lil hawaidah. He is different, opposite from his creation. Anything that you can think or imagine is not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is not male or female. Allah is not a spirit. Allah is not a gas. Allah is not a human. Allah is not in a place. How can Allah be in a place, whether that place is heaven or earth or everywhere or nowhere? How can that apply to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he created all of these things? If you say Allah is in that place, and that place was there when Allah was there. And everything has been created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Correct your belief. We believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all-powerful. He's Qadir. Right? There's nothing more powerful than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what we need to be worried about. You worried about somebody over here, another human being, a thug on a block, your ex-wife, 
the police, the government, the secret, the spies, the algorithm on the software. You scared, you scared, but you're not scared of a lot. There's nobody's power that's unchecked. Allah's al alim he's all-knowing. He knows everything. And his knowledge is not like ours where one time we were ignorant of something and then we come to learn it. No, Allah's power is outside. Allah's knowledge is outside. You don't have to learn. Allah is a height. Allah is the ever-living. La Yamuti never dies. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the all hearing. If I talk low enough, you can't hear me. Well, if ten of you talk to Talk, ten of you talk at the same time, you can't understand all of us. That's not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can all make dua to Allah at the same time. Allah hear all of us. Allah has speech, not like our speech. In the same way that his hearing is not like our hearing and our seeing. We need eyes and ears. You know, we need to understand the language and all kinds of no. Talking about a lot, you're not talking about human beings. If you think about these essential attributes, some of which I just mentioned about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these are things no Muslim can disagree on. No Muslim can disagree on. If you if we not only intellectually memorize these things and can halfway quote them, no, it becomes part of us, our belief. Then we become super empowered Muslims. Yes. There's nothing that's going to happen that's going to throw us off our square. Because we take everything back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever is happening, Allah knows it's happening. It's not like Allah don't know. Remember, he's all knowledgeable. Remember all of his attributes. And learn, they are part of the affordable ayn, the individual obligations, the bare minimum of knowledge that we need to know in the area of iman or belief. You cannot be a good Muslim, you cannot be a Muslim and not know these things. You may not know the Arabic word for it. You may not memorize them. You may not memorize them in order. That's cool, but you have to understand. Extremely important. If you really reflect on all of these things and other things that I didn't mention, you will see that when the brotherhood is based upon that, there's nothing that can break it. Those things that destroy brotherhood, like constantly violating the trust. Constantly violating the trust. When you make a promise to your Muslim brother or sister, and then you don't fulfill the promise, and you don't even notify the person that you're not going to fulfill the promise, a believer wouldn't do that because uh, he knows that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that. And he fears Allah. Those things like uh, uh, that cause division in the brotherhood saying unpleasant things about each other in each other's absence. You know, Allah heard that. We don't want that on our scale. And all of these things that we all can make a long list of are why a lot of us say, I don't mess with them brothers like that. I'm over here. I'm doing my own thing. I can do bad by myself. All of these things are because we got burnt. It's not because of the, of, of the belief system. But why do Muslims burn each other like that? Belief is weak. Think Allah is not aware of what you're doing. Or you're doing it and you, you're in a state of ghafla. You're in a state of heedlessness. You forgot about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his attributes. And the fact that he knows exactly what you're doing. And that he's going to hold you to account for it. There's a connection between belief and brotherhood. That connection was not made by Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but by, for accident. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continued in the hadith that we mentioned only a portion of. He said, أَفَلَا أَدُولُكُمْ عَلَى شَيْءٍ إِذَا فَعَوْتُبُوهُ تَهَابَقْتُمْ أَفْشُوا السَّلَامَ بَيْنَكُمْ Should I not show you something 
that if you do it, you will love one another. And he said, spread the salams amongst each other. Spread the salams among yourselves. I pray that these words from my heart reach your heart, and I pray that we act according to it, and that we embody them, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase the brotherhood amongst us. وَقُولُوا كَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَاكُمُ وَإِسَاعِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ فِي صَفْرُهُ وَإِنَا بُقُوا وَقُفُرُ الرَّعِينَ رَبَّنَا تِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسْنَا وَفِي الْعَاكِ 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 وَكِنَا أَذَابِ النَّارِ أَلْهُمَ الْتَسَلَى وَمِنْكَ سَلَى تَقْرَاتِ يَدَى وَجَلَلِي وَالْفْرَانِ سُبْحَانَ رَبِّكَ وَرَبِّ الْإِزَّةِ عَمَّا يَسِفُونَ